With us now, two state lawmakers here to talk about what's next at the Capitol in 2020. State Representative Laura Devlin, she's a Republican, and Roland Lamar, a Democrat. And representatives both, we thank you for being on the program today. Thank and you. I'll begin with you, Representative Devlin. I want to talk about this debt diet mm. because a lot of the people in the small towns and cities are saying, you know, uh, this is really going to hurt us because they're used to this bonding. Do you think that will be uh, impactful on Election Day at all? Well, you know, the governor said he was going to impose a debt diet, but the current bonding package he has, I think, is close to rivaling what Governor Malloy would bond. The issue is he's not releasing bonding and holding it hostage to our towns in lieu of getting votes to support his transportation plan, and that's just not fair. Do you agree with that? Uh, no, I think it's um, appropriate for the governor to try to determine what our priorities are for the next two years. He's a new governor, just came into office last year, and his hopes of attempting to and reinvigor Connecticut and try to lessen our reliance on bonding to do uh, routine maintenance. Uh, he's decided to hold off until we have a broader uh, deal in place, and I think that's appropriate. Now, we are running into a time when our towns are expecting these dollars, and a deal is going to have to be made very soon, but I think it's been an appropriate stance for the last few months. We have a lot of subject matter to cover in a short amount of time, so I'll start with you on this one. And I want to just talk about tolls a little bit, because next week yeah. we're expecting the governor to, un to release his transportation program. Do you support tolls? as they were proposed last year, or do you support a smaller version? Uh, I support the toll program that we developed in the spring of last year that would have had a statewide um, 52 tolls generally across uh, Connecticut that would have uh, received about 40% of our revenues from out-of-state folks who are coming through Connecticut. Ultimately, we've decided to scale back that program and focus instead on a smaller tolling program around bridges and tunnels. Uh, similarly, though, we expect to receive a lot of revenue from folks, New York, New Jersey residents, uh, coming into uh, Connecticut, passing through our streets. We should, they should pay some of the costs of our roads as well. Representative Devlin, you have a lot of commuters in your town, in Fairfield, and you have said before you're against tolls. Do you remain against them, or can you be persuaded to support a smaller toll program? So I am in opposition to tolls. I'm I'm encouraged by some of the things I hear about the governor's transportation plan, it being an integrated plan, having specific projects outlined, things that we've been asking for, but to require another revenue stream to come in the state that is going to pull money out of the pockets of the people of the state of Connecticut, when at the same time he's diverting hundreds of millions of dollars from the special transportation fund, it just doesn't add up. On top of which, we just had a $1.7 billion tax increase imposed on our residents. When is enough enough? State Senator Will Haskell was quoted as saying this week that people come up to him and say, you know, we can afford tolls. We're ready for tolls. Do, do people say that to you? Do they come up and say, I don't mind tolls? Yeah, no, I hear people talk about the future of Connecticut is going to be on transportation investments. If we want to build a 21st century state that attracts residents, that keeps companies here and growing, we need to support mass transit, uh, bus service, and we need to make sure our highways are operating at the appropriate level. And folks know when they travel to any other state in the Northeast Corridor or throughout uh, the East Coast that they're paying for those other states' uh, transportation infrastructure investments. And when you get on the highway, whether it's 91, 95, or 84, you see predominantly a lot of out-of-state folks getting a free ride through Connecticut. They should help us support and pay for our local roads here in Connecticut. But in fairness, Connecticut residents pay more in gas taxes and taxes that other states don't have. So Massachusetts, for example, collects about $300 million from their tolls. Connecticut residents pay over $300 million through our petroleum gross excise tax. So it, you can't say, you know, they have it, so we need it. We're already paying what Massachusetts residents are. And Massachusetts and New York want us to get tolls more than anyone because then they can go after Connecticut drivers that might owe them money. I want to talk a little bit about marijuana mm. because there's sort of a regional approach to this now that people are saying, well, maybe we should do what they do. And it is legal in many of our surrounding states. What do you support? So at this point, I, I do not support legalizing recreational marijuana. In any way, any form? No, we do have a medical program, and I think that's maybe a conversation we can have down the road. But here we are talking about banning vaping. We're talking about the opioid crisis we have in our state. We're talking about mental health issues that aren't being addressed. You know, as a revenue generator, I don't think that's what we should be looking at right now. We need to get our state's finances in orders. I don't see that as the way of doing it. The Representative Lamar, do you support legalizing recreational marijuana? I do support adult use, uh, regulating adult use uh, marijuana. The idea that you can now just drive up the road a few minutes and uh, buy uh, marijuana products in Massachusetts and Northampton specifically uh, and bring them back to Connecticut creates a whole series of issues about are we really banning it in the state of Connecticut or can 
can we come up with uh, regulation that's most appropriate? And you know, as a father of uh, you know four children, I recognize that marijuana isn't the hardest uh, drug to secure on the black market, and we should you know make this a more regulated uh, and more transparent industry. In your judgment, though, how should it work? Because I get asked this a lot: how it would work? Would people be walking down the street smoking pot? Would they be able to sit in a park and smoke it, or would they have to go to a certain place to smoke it, or maybe in the privacy of their own home? I think it, you'd regulate it similar to how you regulate um, other activities. Like you'd, you'd deem what the appropriate place and time is. Like we regulate alcohol consumption. We determined that it's not appropriate uh, for you to be out in the public streets drinking alcohol all hours of the day. We, we determined the regulations uh, based upon the public health consequences if there are any. So that's part of that conversation. And adopting regulations is the only way that you can really uh, dictate like the most appropriate use. Representative Devlin, is there any room for compromise among Republicans for this? Because there are some Republicans who say, that, well, we might be able to support something. Um, so not that I have heard in that regard. I know our law for enforcement has been very much against it. Um, and I think it just really sends the wrong signal today to the youth in our state. Let's talk about uh, Trump and Lamont in terms of, uh, as you know, the president hurt Republicans in 2018. Do you think he'll hurt them again next year? Uh, so that is, you know, yet to be seen. Um, I would say one positive thing for the state of Connecticut is that the governor has approached the federal DOT for significant funding for our transportation. Um, and so let's hope that that will be a plus for our state. Well, yeah, but in terms of the president, you know, it, it, yeah, the president yeah. next year, 2020, you'll be on a ballot for re-election. Do you think he could hurt you? I mean, the Republicans lost a lot of seats last time around. We the did lose a lot of seats last time, uh, and it was because of President Trump. And, you know, this year, the majority was significant uh, Democrats in the legislature, and they had an opportunity to lead. Would it be easier for you if Republicans had a different president next year? Um, well, it would depend on who that president is, no doubt about well, it. Well, Vice but President the, Pen, yeah, Pence, the, let's say that you know, perhaps the president is impeached and removed. Would so, that be a better situation for you to run for re-election? Um, you know, very difficult for me to say. The challenge is the distraction of focusing on a federal race and focusing on the president's race when it is our state government that has the most impact on people's day-to-day -day lives. Would you use any Trump association against your opponent? Uh, not in my district in New Haven. I don't think it's unnecessary, but I do think Republicans have a tough policy choice to make. Are we going to run with the National Republican Party, or are we going to try to focus on local issues and, and rebrand Connecticut Republicanism? In okay. Connecticut, you know, I want them to associate as closely to Trump as they possibly can. And it's better if Trump is on the ballot for Democrats, but the reality is he should be impeached. Well, a final question for you, too, because, uh, you know, Governor Lamont, recent polls show that he is unpopular. Does that hurt you running next year? I don't think it does. I don't think Governor, Governor Lamont's uh, standing uh, is going to impact too many local races, largely because uh, Governor Lamont's unpopularity isn't um, based upon things that are... You know, an affront to most voters, where Governor, where President Trump's unpopularity is based upon rule of law considerations uh, and serious affronts to basic standards uh, that we expect out of the presidency. Roland Lamar, Laura Devlin, great to see you in the program. When we come back, what's next for a local journalism legend? And hit me up on social media right now on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram.